wonderful man that we knew as Ned Reese. Uh, today we come together uh, in grief. We mourn our loss, but today we celebrate. <coughs> the promise of resurrection is real, and we know that Ned is with his Lord. So praise God for the life of Ned Reese. We have gathered here to praise God and give witness to our faith as we celebrate the life of Ned Cox Reese. We come together in grief, acknowledging our human loss, and may God grant us grace that in pain we may find comfort, in sorrow, hope, and death, resurrection. Let's pray. <coughs> Holy God, we thank you for this day, and we thank you for the life of Ned Reeves. We thank you for the joy that he brought to so many of us. We thank you for his birth. We thank you for the life that he lived so well. God, it's hard to imagine 94 years with one person, but the impact of this man is tremendous by evidence of the folks that have gathered here this day. And so over the next time, an hour or so, we pray that all that we say, think, and do would glorify you, and that we might proclaim the promises of Jesus through the life of men. That through the power of your grace, we might celebrate the promise of all of our resurrections through the grace and strength of the powerful name of Jesus Christ. For it's in his name that we pray, and all of God's people say. Amen. Church, we want to invite you to stand and sing together. We want to sing hymn number 77. You'll find the hymnals uh, kind of in your pews underneath. But uh, let us stand together and sing the promise of how great thou art.
day I was talking to his son, and uh, Sam started to say things like, you know, I'm not a good man. I just pray that people see Jesus when they think of you. And man, what a promise we have for the good news of Christ, and what a promise we have for life in the life of Church, let us join together. I'm reading the comforting words of Psalm 23. You found them printed in your bulletin, but many of you probably know them not all. Let us read out loud together these comforting words of my Lord. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. At the hospital, we found out that one of Ned's favorite songs was Fill My Cup. It was a song that many of us sang over him and with his family. It was a song that gave him comfort and strength. And so now let us hear these words as we remember Ned.
Oh God, we pray that you might come and fill our cup. That you might come and meet us where we are and in the midst of our sadness and grief, you might fill us up. God, we thank you for the man that we come to remember this day. But we thank you for the Savior that he goes and walks with this day. And so we pray that you might continue to be in our midst and that you might guide our steps, be with our thoughts, and help us to be more like your Son. For we give thanks through the powerful name of Jesus, the risen Christ, that promises us he goes to prepare a place for each of us. His name we pray. Amen. And amen. Church, hear these words from the Gospel of John, chapter 14, and its selected verses throughout the 14th chapter. Hear these words of comfort and strength from Christ Jesus himself. Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many mansions. And if it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to be with myself, so that where I am, there you too may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you will also live. I have said these things to you while I am still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to each of you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives, so do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. You know, I love this passage, but it's hard to not be sad, and it's hard to not let your heart be troubled. Today is a sad day. We mourn the loss of a great man. In fact, it was a surprising loss, a loss that many of us in the hospital were not predicting. The nurses told us the day before that Ned was declining, but we had hope. We said God is a good God, and he knows what he's doing, and so Ned rallied. He got a little stronger. He started to look at us and squeeze our hands. He started to acknowledge our presence. He especially perked up when his two children were by his side. The nurses came in and they tended to him and they were able to remove the ventilator and we thought Ned was going to do it. He started to cough ferociously. He was a strong man like we know. But one of the things about Ned is he loved his Lord. And when the time was coming where his body was tired of fighting, there was a peace that came. There was a peace that came and a comfort that washed over his family and hopefully reminded each of you that you are not alone. But he was a good man, a life well lived. He was born in 1924, right across the county, he lived most of his life over in Mount Pleasant in his childhood days. His parents, uh, William, who was known as Fred and Claudia, he had a sister named Nancy, and they grew up on a farm over there that actually Gina and Michael and Jackson actually live on today. But growing up on a farm, I think you learn a few things, and Ned learned a few things that helped him in the rest of his life. I, I think he learned the value of, of two important things. One, that living on a farm teaches you that hard work is a necessity. Ned wasn't scared of hard work, even though he did his work with a crafty pair of scissors. A week ago, two weeks ago, he decided it was time to stop cutting hair. Amazing that you worked for 94 years. And the second thing that he learned about living on a farm is that he took joy in living simply. He was a man that didn't need much, didn't need 
many frills, uh, a humble man by many status, never made a, a huge mark on society, never seemingly made a fortune or made a, a business that was wildly successful. He was a man that was faithful. He was steady on his two feet, ready to take care of people and make them look their best so they could go out and conquer the world. But life changed for Ned when he met a special woman, Doris Elizabeth Fisher Reese. She was the love of his life, wasn't he? Your mother, a woman that he talked about and remembered fondly even to the last days of his life. There were good memories. Uh, Stan and Gina shared some of those in the hospital. But I believe one of the greatest things that Stan uh, or that uh, Ned came to tell us about was that he was proud of his family. He was proud of his children. He was proud of the people they chose to marry, especially gra uh, proud of his grandchildren, his great-grandchildren, and even old Red, he claimed Evan, <laughs> would say things like, you're still around here, old Red? Well, I guess you can stay. But Ned picked on you if he liked you. He made jokes. But Stan and Gina, some of their memories uh, were revolving around baseball, baseball, softball, that Ned was an avid fan. Uh, Stan shared a story of how he and his dad would listen to the AM radio station uh, to hear the Cardinals games. And in the summer heat, they'd sit on the back porch or on the floor, and they would just enjoy time together. Uh, Gina enjoyed time with her parents. She remembers the stories of when her mom and dad would dance together in the living room. It's romantic and poetic in nature, and she would be standing on their feet in the middle as they would listen to Jim Reeves, someone who they had to educate me on in the hospital, but thanks to technology, we listened to, to Jim Reeves around Ned Reese. They would go on family vacations, and they said that Ned was an engaging father. He would play with them. He would take care of them. Second only to the love of his family was his love for the St. Louis Cardinals and the Duke Blue Devils. In fact, when I showed up in the hospital, uh, I didn't know that Ned had a, a hairpiece, and uh, he had a, a beautiful head, kind of like Stan and myself, but was, he wasn't prepared to let you see that beauty all the time in church. And so when I walked in, Ned didn't have hair, but he had a Blue Devil's hat on, and I almost thought that I was in the wrong room. <laughs> but he loved the Duke Blue Devils. He was faithful, right? Even when Duke was bad in football, he would buy season tickets, and the family would, would go on trips to Durham, and they would watch the Blue Devils. It was a time where they would bond, a time that they grew as a family, right? They were faithful together. Many of you knew him as the barber in town. How many people has had their hair cut by Ned or maybe even his wife? There were countless people. I never had the joy because I didn't have anything for him to cut. <laughs> but he started next to his dad in a small barber shop and it grew and, and Ned had his business. Like I said, a couple weeks ago decided it was time to close the doors a couple weeks ago, uh, I guess a month ago, Ron Deloney was going over to see him, and, and he called, and he said, have you heard from Ned? Has he gone to the hospital or something? I said, no, I haven't heard from Ned today, and we were worried, so I called Stan to let him know, or actually, no, I didn't have your number at that time, and we were worried, sick about it, and come to find out that Ned was just down at the barber shop putting in a full day of work and wasn't answering the phone. He was a, a strong man, right? Uh, but he was a, a faithful man in his work, and one of his uh, members or one of his, uh, his clients stopped by when uh, the family was cleaning out the shop yesterday. And he said, you know, I'd like to consider that Ned was a good friend of mine. He was a, a friend that, that would listen. He, he would listen to me when I would talk in the chair, but, but he did that to everybody. He was one of the few people that would take time to listen to you. You know, Ned touched so many people, more people than we can imagine. He was a faithful member here at this church. He loved Midway. He took pride that he was the oldest member of this church and would 
tell everyone like it was a badge of honor. But I believe that was one of the ways that he would live out his faith, that he loved to proclaim that Christ was his Savior, not, not necessarily with his words, but his compassion, his attitude, and the way he lived his life. You see, I think Ned Reese was one of those men that understood fully what God's peace was all about. You know, sometimes we think peace is the absence of conflict, right? Peace in war, peace in our culture. But God's peace isn't the absence of conflict. It's truly the presence of God. And if anyone knew what the presence of God was about, it was Ned. He cared deeply about God's peace, and the way he lived his life, he would give that to others, whether it was in a joke, whether it was in the joy of the simple things, whether it was giving someone a good haircut, an honest day's work, or taking care of his family. He longed to be faithful and believe, help people believe in the peace of God. Today, I believe that Ned is rejoicing in heaven. He's fully in the presence of God, telling his wife Doris how beautiful she looks, holding her close, cracking jokes with his old buddies and making new friends because he was a friend to all. But the reality is we mourn the loss of this great man because he made a difference in all of our lives. He was someone you'll never forget. He's someone that made you feel connected, that he cared deeply about other people. Whether it was his children, his customers, his friends, it was people that Ned Reese cared about. You know, this morning we were getting ready for church. And Dale Fink came up and he said, you know, as much as Ned loves baseball, isn't it ironic that today is spring training for baseball? So Ned no longer is here in the minor leagues. He's been called up to the big leagues in heaven. Listening to the St. Louis Cardinals on that radio and waiting for all of us and looking forward to the day that our promise of Christ's resurrection is fulfilled. For he has done well. He was a good and faithful servant. And he says, bring that baby back here right now. <laughs> that baby didn't do anything wrong. You, you bring him. Ned would say that, wouldn't he? he he's okay. You bring him, bring him back. But today, let us give thanks. Give thanks for a man that for almost 95 years lived a life that honored God, that cared for his family, and that shared the peace of Christ with all he met. Let us pray. God of us all, your love never ends. And when all else fails, you still are God. We pray to you for one another in our need and for all anywhere who mourn with us this day. To those who doubt, give light. To those who are weak, strength. To all who have sinned, mercy. And to all who sorrow, your peace. Keep true in us the love with which holds us together. And in all our ways, we trust in you. O oh God, you have given us everything. At first, you gave us Ned. And now we give him back to you. We thank you for all with which you have blessed us even to this day, for the gift of joy in days of health and strength, and for the gifts of your abiding presence and promise in the days of pain and grief. We praise you for home and friends and for our baptism and place in your church with all who have faithfully lived and died. Above all else, we thank you for Jesus, who knew our griefs, who died our death and rose for our sake, and who lives and prays for us and taught us 
that when we pray, we should pray like this. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Might we stand together and proclaim the promises of our faith that we find in the words of amazing grace. Let us stand, sing, and proclaim that Christ's grace is sufficient for our journey. Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. 